everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these, I think I might call them the pop and stand card or stand and pop. <laughs> I don't know, but I really love how these have come together. Now I'm using a die and some of you are going to recognise this because I know a lot of you have it, but on, I think it's going to be Wednesday, I will show you how to make this same kind of style without any dies. Okay, so watch this one, get some inspiration. If you've got this die, then brilliant. And uh, yeah, just, well, hopefully you enjoy it. But basically, so this is how they look, and they're little clocks. It's like a, a mantle clock, so sweet. And then there's that one there as well. Very girly with these ones. The next one I'm going to do a bit more bolder with the colours. I've got the balloons there, you've got yay, party time. And then on the back you have plenty of room to write your message and then I've used the stamps that say time is not measured by clocks but by moments, happy birthday. I think that's really nice and then that one I've embossed directly onto there as well. So just a couple of ways but you can see there how it all kind of works and the whole thing folds flat and it will fit in a 5 by 7 envelope. And then you just open it up and it stands out, they've both got a really nice profile to them. You can see they, they find their shape. I mean obviously if it's in an envelope for a long time it might need a little bit of help but you can see there they both stand up really nicely. So yeah this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Okay so this is the stamp and die set by Paper Discovery and those of you that watched my pocket watch I know that was a really popular tutorial and many of you went and got the die set and this is what I used to make the pocket watch. It's one of my favourite tutorials I've just absolutely fallen in love with that little wonderful little uh, card. But you also get this huge die here. And I was thinking a lot about it because it's not something that I would make, I wouldn't ever really make a card that big. So I was trying to think of other ways to do it. So I wanted to, I looked at ways of scoring through it and reducing the size and that's how I've come up with this. So you can see it's the whole front. If you bring that down, you can kind of see there how it all comes together. But by adding that score line, across well, about three quarters of the way down, you create something like this. And I just, I really, really love it. And you can make this easily as a masculine card as well. Just change your cardstock, use your browns, your blues, your greens and things like that. And it will look really nice. But that's the chain for the pocket watch. So um, today I've just used the larger die here. That's all you need to make this one. And then the stamps that I've used that come with the, the stamp and die, well, stamp and die set is this one here. Sorry, I've got a squeaky, squeaky chair is this one here. So I've already taken them off because I've been using them. It's really nice and I'm using the clock and then I'm using time to party. So I thought they make really nice birthday cards and then that's where you've got the time is not measured by clocks but by moments and then I've used the happy birthday. But you've also got take time for yourself. So it's a really nice one. Maybe someone's just getting over an illness and they need to rest up. I think you could make it as a nice get well card and then you've got to celebrate and I also think it would make great party invitations as well. And then enjoy the good times, you know, so there's some lovely ones. And you've got all your hands there for the clock and time to be happy. So what I've already gone ahead and done is I've just die cut a few bits because you don't need to watch me do that. Also the colours I've used, so for that one there, I'm going to show you how to get this effect. And that was using the Harmony, Spectrum Noir Harmony, and it's the water reactive dyes. And I'm going to use the yellow one today and show you how to create that look. So it's really, really easy. So I've already gone ahead and die cut it in the yellow. And then you want to die cut it again. But you, well, I mean, die cut the whole thing. I just used a bit of scrap, but you want to die cut. I'll give you the length in a minute, what you'll actually need. And then I've just die cut a few of these bits. Now, these are from separate dies. These are from these sets, sorry. These are both first edition. So I've used the first edition Build Your Own Cupcake, and I used the Yay, which is just there. I just cut the bottom bits off. And then I used the larger Yay on that one there, which I think looks really nice. And then I used this balloon here, which I think is a Dovecraft one. So, but any nice balloon ones, I mean, you might not even want to put balloons in it, but I've just done a little cluster of them there and I just thought that looked really nice. So I've already gone ahead and die cut three balloons and I'm not sure whether I'm going to use that yay, because I think it's too yellow or that one, probably be that one, but I'll keep that one for another project. You then want two pieces of cardstock. Well, that was it, because I'm not going to do... No, I'm going to do white and I'm going to distress it, but then I thought, actually, no, I'm going to do pink. So I think I ended up cutting them, yeah, the same. So I'm going to do pink and I'll tell you the score lines there. So you want a piece of three by five and a quarter, and this is to make this piece here, this pop-out piece. And along the five and a quarter side, you want to score at one inch and then at four inches and five inches. 
So you should have this quarter inch tab here, okay, and that's what we use to connect it. We're going to run that through our die machine in a minute with the circle. Tell a lie, you do need another die. You want the smallest of the circles because that will cut around your clock face perfectly. And um, that I must have got, oh no, <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. Right, that's all you need there and that's the scoring done. So I'm just going to bring in this piece that I've used before and just show you how to get that really fun effect. Putting the card together is super quick so this won't take too long at all. So you just want to lay the die back down over the die cut piece. We'll keep it in it if it's still in it from when you've run it through the die machine. But it will kind of all like slot back into place. So just kind of click it all back in there like so. Oh, and then it slides out again. If I keep mine lied down then that will work better. There we go, that's him. I'm going to focus on the top first, so I don't know how this yellow is going to react because obviously I use the pink, well actually I use pink on pink, so that's that same pink against that lighter pink cardstock and you get all that lovely detail there at the bottom which I just thought was really nice and you can see it really does stand out against white cardstock. So this is called Lemon Tonic and I'm just going to ink up my brush there, take some of the excess off. Yeah I think it, yeah it will probably look quite nice, it's quite no, if you go over it a bit just to build up that colour, I think it's going to look really nice. And then as I come into the actual main card area, I'm just I just want to kind of blend it in a bit. So again, just take off the excess. You want to have a bit more of an intense colour around the edge, but then kind of just brush it in to that open space. And then just start bringing it around. Hold that die. And this is the great thing about Olga's dies, is that all the detail she puts in, this is what she does. She then uses it as one big stencil. So I'm going to, again, just take off the excess. And I'm just in shot there, but I'm just doing exactly the same. So I'm just going to continue that. And then you can go back over again with the darker. So if you have got, you know, some darker yellows or whatever colour you're using, you can almost create like an ombre, like a nice blend from dark to kind of lighter in the middle there. So I'm just going to finish this off. Okay, and then the reveal. Look. Oh, I don't know how well that's showing up. It's really good in person. Let me bring it up a bit closer so you can see. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So it just gives you really nice effects. And again, on the bottom, we're going to be cutting this off in a minute. We're still using it, but we're going to trim it off. But isn't that lovely? And then, you, like I said, you can go in with a, I would use a sponge. And if you wanted to create more of like a, a darker edge, just to create a, a bit of a shadow, I guess, against it, you can certainly do that as well. But I think, I think I'm happy with that one. I'm going to get that rinsed off and wash my hands because that's one thing is don't put this, I've put, done this before and then I've put them back on my magnet and totally forgot and then I've got ink everywhere. So I'm just going to clean all this off and put this away. Okay, another quick thing, so I've just cleaned that all off. If you have, for example, chosen to do yours with white cardstock, then you will also want to distress before you put your inks away and stuff, but distress this piece, which in my case is going to be pink, so I don't need to do anything to that. But you can see even on there, I've just gone in with my ink just to, you know, just to kind of distress the edges and the corners just so it all blends in together there. All right. Okay, so next I want to do some heat embossing and I'm using some heat resist acetate. Now I've done this with the pocket watch, but I don't believe I showed it in the actual video because sometimes I prepare a lot, but things like this, I think there's a lot of tips and stuff. Um, so I just, you know, it's, I think it's quite good to share it. So I'm just going to cut off. This is the Crafters Companion. You get 15 sheets and um, it's just great stuff. So I'm just cutting away. Let's just take that out for a minute. Um, square. Well, like a rectangle there. Okay, so I've got my acetate. And then I find if you're stamping on acetate, you can do it freehand. But I do find you get a much better result if you use a stamping platform because your stamp is can, well it will, it will slide on the acetate. So even if you're very careful just to place it down and just tap it, it may just move a little bit. And if you've got an intricate die um, stamp, then it would end up looking a little bit maybe blurred. So I am using the stamping platform here. So I've just got my anti-static buddy and you just want to go over the acetate and just really cover it. And I always go over my fingers as well, just to get rid of any static, any grease, anything that you might have, hand cream, you know, things like that, it will attract and the powder will stick to it. So I'm just gonna use that. 
and then I've got my stamps. Now I have been using them, I haven't been bothered, I haven't been bothered, I couldn't be bothered to clean them again just to do, use them for the same thing. So I am going to carefully place this over. Now you do need to make sure you get your clock facing the right way. You can obviously use the die set for, for um, reference. You can see there that's 12, then 1, 2, 3. So you just want to look for that when you st you know lay it down. It doesn't really matter at this point, but certainly when you go to put your sentiment on. So I'm just going to carefully drop that down because I have already got some uh, Versamark already on there. So that's the Versamark there. That's the one that I like to use. The Well one's very good as well, and there's many others on the market. So I'm just going to pick that one up. It might already even print because it's got some left on there. So let's just pop that back into place. Right, I'm just going to ink that up and then just lay that down. See, I can then, you know, put pressure on it and I know it's not going to slide anywhere. Lift that one off and I think, yeah, no, because it's printed before, what I'm going to do is yeah, just put another piece of acetate in because <laughs> It was just confusing me with the print on the other side, so I'm just going to lay that one down like so. Yeah, that looks really good. And then I'm going to grab the time and two party stamps. And I, I mean, this may well not be picking it up very well for you on the video, but I'm just laying these down in the centre of that clock face. Take that one off those up. That one is to heat emboss on the back in a bit, that's the, just the sentiment so okay then I'm going to sprinkle my powder, this is the Nouveau Silver Embossing Powder and then once you sprinkle it on you will see, there we go, cool and it's really crisp again because I've used that stamping platform, I'm just going to get away with that bit of there, because I don't want, although you, we're not going to be seeing any of that anyway, so it'd be cut away, but that's that one. And then the key with your heat gun is turn it on and leave it for a good 30 seconds first, make sure it's obviously not aimed at anything, and then, you know, apply the heat to your surface, and it will just melt it instantly, rather than you holding it on there while the heat gun's heating up, it will cause warping. Whereas by doing it this way, you might still get a little bit of warping. You won't on the acetate because it's heat resist, but on cardstock, but you certainly get a, a reduced warping. So yeah, make sure it's nice and warm to start with. And now we've got a beautiful piece of embossed acetate. Love this so much. And you can see how now that's gonna be, because it's gonna have the yellow behind it. So I think it's gonna stand out and then we need to cut a window in this piece. So you want the, um, but it doesn't really matter at this point, but you're going to use that die, that circle die, and you want a die cut within that square. So I'm just going to grab my, um, where's my washi tape? So I'm just going to stick that down in place because I don't want that to shift at all. Okay, so I'm going to take that away. Keep that one. And then that is going to sit behind there and that will frame it perfectly. Now if you want to you can keep it open okay so you can see right through it which I'm going to do because it's going to be against that yellow or you can back it with some white so just behind there is a white square so I cut it to just under three by three and then back to the back of that but now I'm going to stick this down so what I've done is where is where is all my stuff do you know it's not even very messy <laughs> Right, I'm going to cut around this, but I'm going to leave about one eighth of an inch just over border. So we've got somewhere to stick this against the frame. And then I'm going to go around this circle. And just It just fits this tape and just hug the die cut circle side and just run this double sided tape so I can stick the acetate to it. But if you're just using, you might have stamped your clock onto cardstock and then you can just, you know, stick it directly on with just normal glue or something. You don't need to use this, it's just because I'm using acetate, this sticks really well. Take that release paper off. And then I'm going to flip this over, make sure everything's all lined up. You want the top to be where you've got your quarter inch piece there, that's the top of it. And then I just want to make sure this circle 
lines up like so and then you can see now I've got a clock face and if you've got anything sticky I've got a little bit of tape I just go over it with this on the back and just let the powder grab all that sticky to all the stickiness and it will now it's completely dry and it's not going to stick against your card like so so now you can fold and burnish those score lines like so and that is now ready to attach to our card okay next we want to snip this piece off but really neatly so we're just going to follow the curve into where it's already cut and again on this side here because we're just going to re-stick this onto the front now we've got that piece what you want to do is lay it down in your scoreboard okay and then you want to score as close to the the top one there so I'm in, if you've done it cut it off just exactly where I have you should be able to score at one um, at three quarters of an inch okay like so and then we're going to trim off the rest just so we've got a nice kind of little quarter inch tab something like that you only need a little bit you don't need much at all and then you just want to fold that down okay like I said the one that I'm going to make well I think you're really going to like it well I've actually made it so <laughs> but I will be making it obviously in the tutorial but I think you're really going to like that one so I'm just going to just burnish that but you should have quarter of an inch like so okay and then with that quarter of an inch pop it back in here again and you want to score at two inches okay and then fold it so now you can see where we're getting our shape and then that one will sit perfectly over that little tab and it will conceal itself behind this little section here so that's why I just wanted it to be that small you know um, quarter of an inch you can see there how I just think it comes to I think it comes together really nicely so let's get rid of those little bits there and then what you want to do is die cut another one like I said die cut it all if you need to but I just had a bit of scrap here also you need to cut off the top of this you don't have to if you don't want to you might want to put something around that some ribbon it's entirely up to you but I am just going to again just kind of follow the curve and just bring that around like so okay I'm going to do with that one I'm just going to cut it straight just slightly under just so I know it hides behind like so Actually, I'll talk you through that bit in a minute because you're better off sticking this on first and then you might be able to measure it because you, yours might be a little bit off or, you know, you've done it slightly different. So at least that way you'll be able to measure it properly. Now I'm just going to run some of my Kalau along this little tab here. And you want to, like I said, stick this on. You might find it better to work from the back because then you can get these ends all lined up nice and neatly. But you want it to go through that centre part there. And it will all be hidden, it will all hide itself, so yeah, I need to go. And it will perfectly sit from end to end. See there, it's right in, and so is it there as well. And then just flip it over and just make sure you're happy that it is straight. It won't make too much of a difference with the way it stands. It might have a little rock to it if you don't get it dead straight, but it will still stand up. But you just want to... Yeah, just spend some time. But you can see now where that folds, it's going to fold flat, like so. You might find it better to actually fold that up, um, just so you're able to stick it down there. Then, what you want to do is measure this piece to make sure that you get the next piece the same length. So, if you see there, yeah, so mine's coming in the same as what my other ones were. You want that to be three quarters of an inch, you see there. Okay, so this here is six inches where we've scored. All right, so you want it to now, this piece, you want to cut to six and three quarters of an inch. So it will give you the overhang to line up with the front. So with this one here, I'm going to get my other scoreboard. Okay, so I'm just going to lay that in there. Make sure this is nice and flush with the side and then just do six and three quarters. I'm just going to score there. And then I'm going to use this trimmer, just my smaller one, and line up that score line and just cut straight down. Could have just put it straight into your trimmer at six and three quarters as well, but my one, I just didn't want to get out the big one. Now, when we stick this on the back of here, we will have that overhang and it will create your stand. So I'm going to add glue to the back of all of this. And just lay that down. It's easy to line up because you're just following the pattern. Like so. 
and that will add strength because again I'm using that strong glue but it also gives you a nice area to write your message but I'm going to stamp it on a separate piece and then pop it on there. You can heat emboss and you know do it on there but I do like that effect. Oh no, that one's nice but I like that effect with the little border. So that's what I'm going to do with yellow or you can like I say just heat emboss but you want to heat emboss first. Don't heat emboss once it's on the card because it, like I said you, you don't want it to warp. You want that to be completely nice and straight. So just let that dry for a moment. Okay and then with this piece here you want to stick the bottom down first, so I'm just going to pop some glue on that one. And you want to sit it in the centre of this score line, like so. And if you just fold it up and put the whole thing flat, you'll be able to just push down. Just hold it like that for a minute until it sets. Okay, and then you want to pop some glue along one just that little one there then fold that whole piece in half make sure it's nice and like flat and then fold this all up and then lay it down like that and that way you know everything's going to lie flat and you know it's all lined up and you can see there I've got a tiny bit just coming over that edge and I've got a tiny bit over that edge and it runs perfectly straight through that pattern so I know that everything's lined up so it you know will all sit nicely there's not going to be any kind of wonky bits. I'm just going to use the edge of my scissors here just to burnish that a little bit. I'm going to open that because there's some kalal that's oozed out, so I don't want it to stick. But now, once you open it up, and it will stand up. Yay! <laughs> so now you want to decorate. It literally is. Yay! <laughs> I just realised there. But I think that one is just going to pop a little bit more than that one. See, some of you will be going, no, we want the yellow one, but I think I'm going to go for that one just there. I'm going to put some sparkle there because on that one I put that little stone in the middle, but on that one I put a bow. So, again, it's a tie lip tube. But I'm going to, you don't need to use hot glue, but I've got, I've got it on from another project, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on there, and then I'm just going to pop a little bit of hot glue on the edge of that one. And that can go right up in the top corner because that's the highest one. That one I've just put a bit of foam on so that one can go kind of in a bit. I might put a bit of hot glue over that as well just to secure it a little bit more. So that's going to go like there. But it's just lifted with that foam. And then this one is going to stick just over that one there. And then I think what I'm going to do is I want to lift some of this yellow. I really love it, but I feel it needs a little bit of, like it really does stand out on these ones. So I'm going to just add some highlight with my white Posca pen. Can you see there what I'm doing? It just kind of brings out that pattern a little bit more. So I'm going to go around and just do this a little bit. Okay, so I've just added the bow and I've added these little enamel dots and you can see all the white there, just highlighting where I've used that darker yellow. I think maybe next time I'll go in with an even darker yellow or I'll have a lighter yellow cardstock, like more of a, a lemon. But I really like it. I think it's bright, it's colourful. I think it makes a great, like I said, party invitation. That's where I'm really seeing these. But also they make lovely birthday cards. So I just need to finish off the back so I'm actually going to use this scrap piece here and I'm going to pop a nice piece of pink behind it so I'm going to I'm going to heat emboss it first so I've already got the the other sentiments there so I'm just going to again just clean up just trim that down I'm just sticking it on a piece of matching pink card and then I'm just going to trim a frame around that and I'm just going to flip this over 
and pop that in the middle. So you've got lots of room to write and then you've just got that nice sentiment. I've just put it on some foam as well, some powder, so just brush away all that. But there you go, so that's the back of the card. I think it looks really pretty. So I love this. I just, I'm worried on camera, you can't see all that detail, but that white really helps, I think, kind of add something to it. I think it was just maybe a bit too yellow. But I just think it's really fun. I love clashing colours. I love just making yeah different things. So let's get all this tidied away. Okay, so these are the three. So there's this one here. I think this is my favourite. It's just really clean, really fresh looking. Just love the pink against the white there. I think that looks really nice. And then we've got that one there. The tone on tone again, really like it. And I like the white there to back it because it breaks up all that pink. I'm wondering whether I think something's bugging me with this. I think it needs white behind it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that. And you want a piece of three, just under three by three. I'm now gonna run some tape and it's overlapping, like coming off the side ever so slightly because I don't have that much of space, you know, between the edge there. So I don't want that to, I don't want to run the risk of the tape coming into the actual circle. But I think this is what's missing. Something's just been bugging me. It's just too much. It's just too pink and yellow. It needs a third color and you should always work in threes. I should know that from all my years in uh, retail merchandising and everything. So let's just finish this off here. And then I'm going to have to very carefully now go in with this behind. That's it. <laughs> That's what it was missing. Oh my gosh, it just has totally transformed it. Oh, I was really just kind of like, mm, it's not going how I thought it would. So that's what I would say. If you're going to add white, then keep, you know, have it like this, because that, I just think, really pops against that. That had the white, and that's what that needed, because it breaks up all that pink. And then, like I said, you should work in threes, really, when you are having more than one colour. That white now in the middle, it just ties in all the white that I've highlighted. And, yeah, it's... Now I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got a little bit, though, in there. Can you see that little tiny speck? I'm going to have to try and get that out somehow, although I don't think I can. Anyway, hey-ho. But there you have it. So you've kind of gone through that with me right from the beginning. I do really, really like these. I think, for me, it's allowed me to now see that die in a different way because I was kind of a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. I have got another project that I'm going to be doing with it, though. Um, but in terms of a card, I think this is this really works for me. And again, just screams party invite. I think that'd be awesome to get through the door. You've been invited to, you know, you could have, um, you know, twenty first kind of coming off here, and um, I just yeah, I really really love them. So I hope you do too. I hope you now prefer this one a little bit more. <laughs> now it's got that white panel. Sorry about the glare there, but there you go. You can see them all. So thank you for watching. Like I said, tune in later on this week on a way to make this style card, but without the dice. So it's gonna be, I'm not even gonna say what shape actually, we'll leave it at that. So thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Bye.